Is in, in polar, what, what was the U for us here? U is the radius, right? So in polar, the radius is positive. So, so you just get U. So that's where it comes from. Now, you have to believe in this thing right here called the Jacobian determinant, which is, yeah. I'm wondering if I can, yeah, I want to talk about this more. I want to talk about exactly where this comes from, okay? Why it's called the Jacobian determinant. Because I want to show you well, y'all tell me, do y'all want to see where the spherical um, row squared sine phi comes from? Do y'all want to see that? Is it complicated? It is complicated. But you have to, a bit complicated in a good way type of complicated. Because the algebra in it's like a lot, but it's cool. Okay, so let's just back up. This section is about changing variables. And this formula which we are waving our hands at a little bit, is saying that, look, when you do double integral over d of f of x, uh, y, dA, that you can change, if you have some way to change your x and y's to, some, to, to two new things with u and v in them, you're welcome to do that, but you better compute this and have that sitting at the end. In polar, it just turns out to be r, or in this case, the way I showed it, u, right? It's just r. I can't show you spherical yet because this is only for double integrals, okay? So for me to be able to do triple integral, I need to, see, I need to show you what the Jacobian determinant turns out to be with a triple integral because it's not this. It's more complicated. So if I can right now just let's stick with double integrals, let me show you what this actually comes from, then we'll be able to go to triple. Okay, so I'm going to leave this on the board. Geez, this purple doesn't want to go. <clears throat> Scroll up a little bit. Okay. So we have... Um, We have x, we're sticking in this, right? And I'm trying to show you where this is coming from. We had a conversion, I don't want to use purple. It doesn't erase very well. So we have x was equal to some new function of u and v. And we have y is some new function of u and v as well. So for polar, it was r cosine theta, r sine theta, or u cosine v, u sine v. All right. The way we get this thing is we set up a matrix, a two by two matrix, matrix. And what it is, is the top left is the partial of x with respect to u, and then this will be partial of x with respect to v. And then, so all I did here is I took this, this x and I took the two partials that correspond to it, u and v. First u, then v. Now I go to the next variable, it's y, partial with respect to y, or par partial of y with respect to u, partial y with respect to v. So I do my x's first, and I do the two partials that are possible, then I do my y's and the two partials. Okay? Now what I do is I find the determinant of this matrix. Now we talked about determinants earlier in the class when we were learning cross products. Right? So when I take the determinant of a two by two matrix like this, what we do is this times this, time, right, and then minus, right, minus this times this. Right? And that's that formula. But one additional thing. Because the determinant could be negative, we take the absolute value. And the absolute value comes from the idea that that area of a triangle is the magnitude of the cross product. So you, at the end of the day, need to have positive there. Okay, so I still am not really explaining, 
like the geometry, but I am explaining to you what this is coming from, right? It's coming from the absolute value of the determinant of a matrix that you create by taking the first variable and then looking at all of its possible partials and then the second variable, all of its par possible partials. So that means, can I erase? Yeah, okay. So now let's try this for a triple integral. And I want more space, so I'm gonna scroll that up. So let's say I have a triple integral over some solid E of f of x, y, z, d, v. Let's say I'm trying to do a triple integral and I want to convert it over to a different system, like spherical. Then what I need to do is first I need to know what the conversion is. So x <coughs> is going to become some new function of u, v, and w, let's say, right? And then the y is going to be, become some new function of u, v, and w. And the z is going to become some new function of u, v, and w. Now I'm going to set up a matrix, right? And the matrix is going to, going to be all the partials of first the x, right? So partial x with respect to u partial x with respect to v, partial x with respect to w. Now, y. Partial y with respect to u, partial y with respect to v, partial y with respect to w. Didn't give myself enough room here. Finally, partial z with respect to u, partial z with respect to v, partial Z with respect to W. So it's a matrix that is made up of all of the partials. And now, the determinant. We need the determinant of this. And this is where we haven't talked about this. How do you do the determinant of a three by three matrix? How many of y'all know how to do it or have seen it? So two of you have seen it. Maybe. Okay, so a three by three is harder, obviously, than a two by two. I put it here at the beginning of the notes because I had a feeling we would do this. Make that bigger for you. Uh, I don't know if I'm be able to get that without erasing that over there. So if you want to do the determinant of a three by three, here's the way it works. It's just that. Yeah, right, okay, so here's what's gonna happen. To do the determinant of a three by three, the first thing you have is you start with this, okay? A. And you multiply that, it's multiplication, times the determinant of a two by two matrix. <clears throat> and that matrix is this bottom corner like that. <coughs> so you're taking that, whatever it is, and you're multiplying it times the determinant of that. How do you find the determinant of that? You do this times this minus this times this. After you do that, you will subtract, not add. Now you move on to B. You move on to B. And then you do the determinant of what? These two along with these two. So the, the way I see it is like when you do A, you cover these two up and do the determinant of those. When you do B, you cover those two up and you do the determinant of those. And then you'll do plus, so it went, <coughs> it went positive, negative, positive, right? And now it'll be C, cover up those and do the determinant of these. And then whatever that is, is your answer. Do you know how to do the determinant of a four by four? Yeah, so if you do a four by four, right? If you do four by four, <laughs> then the first thing you do is you take this top number, right? Call it A, <laughs> and then you do times the determinant of what? This three by three. And how do you do the determinant of a three by three? That. 
It gets, so in linear algebra, there's formulas that are, that we give you for determinants. Is there another, another like, formula for like every determinant? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. In, in linear algebra, we, we get a generalization of this. <coughs> All right. Okay, y'all ready to take the, de the determinant of this? Let's do it. It's going to be a mess. Okay, an absolute de freaking disaster. But we're going to try it, okay? We're going to try it. Do I have to leave it up there, or can I just... Not, I can't reach up there anyway, so let me just do it right here. Watch it. It's fighting back. Okay. Here we go, we need a determinant of this. What should be equal to? All right, partial x with respect to u, right, is that top piece. Now I cover this up and I do the determinant of this little two by two here. Can we do that in parentheses? It's partial y with respect to v <coughs> times partial z with respect to w minus these two, right? Partial z with respect to v times partial y with respect to w. Okay. We are one third of the way there. I'm going to go below it because I can't keep going to the side. So now I'll do minus. Minus, and now I'm moving on to this one. Partial x with respect to v. Okay, times, now I need to determine, I'm covering this up, it'll be, it'll be these two and those two, right? So partial y with respect to u times partial z with respect to w minus, the, because it's multiplication, this order doesn't matter, right? But y'all double check me here. I think I got it. Let me see. It should, this line should read partial x with respect to v, then parentheses partial y with respect to u times partial z with respect to w minus partial z with respect to u times partial y with respect to w. There's a few places to make mistakes here, would you say? Okay, and now plus, last piece up here, partial x with respect to w, parentheses. Okay, now this one. Partial y with respect to u times partial z with respect to v minus partial z with respect to u times partial y with respect to v. That's it. That's your, that's your determinant. Absolute value, right? We need the absolute value of this. So if I want to convert from any, any 3D system over, here's what I'll have to do. Um, can I erase this thing right here? Leave that up there? Okay. Just remember, we need an absolute value at the end. So if I ever want to go from triple over E of F of X, Y, Z, D, V over to something new where X is x of u, v, w, I'm not going to rewrite this, I already have that on the board, right? z equals blah, blah, blah. Then my new integral is going to become a triple integral over, <coughs> uh, I can't call it e. Let me call it e prime, because it's different than e, right? It's a, it looks different in this new space. And then I will have f, but evaluated at x of u, v, w, and then my y is evaluated at y of u, v, w, dot, dot, dot. No, I'll do it. My z is evaluated at z of u, v, w. So I'm switching all of my, my x, y's, and z's in here. I'm switching them over with the conversion that I have. And then what do I need at the end, right after this? I need that whole thing. So we often will put j there for the Jacobian. Okay, pardon, and then, and then the absolute value, yeah, I, I said I didn't put it there, but I, I did say we would need the absolute value of this.
right? So the Jacobian, and then it's called Jacobian or Jacobian determinant, and then what? D, it's still a volume, so still DV. Okay? Imagine if this was a um, quadruple integral. Right? Then you'd have what? Four variables? If you have four variables here, you would have four different things, which means your Jacobian determinant would be based off of a four by four matrix. And so it would be just massive, right? Could it be done? Yeah. Sure, it could be done. It's just, you know, lots of room for error. Okay, you ready to see spherical? You ready to see where the row squared sine phi comes from? <sighs> okay, here we go. It's hard, to, it's hard to do this and not make mistakes on this one because there's a lot of places to make mistakes. So here's what I need to do. I need this formula, right? I need this formula. I don't want to start the whole thing over and, and say um, rho theta phi, right? I, I want to stick with these letters so I can use that. So here's what I'd like for us to do. If we're going to go from Cartesian to spherical, here's the conversion. X is equal to, let me write what it normally is. It's rho cosine theta sine phi. Then the Y is rho uh, sine theta um, sine phi, right? And then the Z is rho cosine phi. Right, that's what I told you spherical conversion is, right? Now, to make it match with this, I want our X to be equal to what do y'all want to use instead of rho? Do y'all want to use, we have three letters, u, v, and w. Do you want the rho to be u? u? Okay. And then cosine of v and sine of w. Okay, and then, then y would become u <coughs> sine v sine w. And then the z would become u cosine w. Okay, so it's everything we just, like, it's, it's the same conversion, it's just using different letters instead of phi and theta and rho, we're just using u, v, w. And now we just have to compute this. This probably won't come up on camera because I'm, I'm going to need a ton of board space for this. And I've got how much time? 14 minutes. Let's try and do it right here. I'm off camera, but you're not missing anything if you're watching this video. It's not worth it. Okay, partial x with respect to u. Let's take our time. Partial x with respect to u. Here's x. What's the partial of this with respect to u? Cosine b. Cosine b sine w. Right? Yeah. Cosine v sine w. Parenthesis. All right. Partial y with respect to v. Partial y with respect to v. Constant, constant, right? Yeah. Cosine v? Okay. You all read it to me. U? U, U cosine v sine w. Sine w. All right, that's just, I start marking these out as we go, right? I've got that, I've got that. Partial z with respect to w. Negative u sine w? Negative u sine w, shit. Okay, so negative u sine w. Okay. Got this. I'll put checks instead. Check, check, check. Minus, how important is it that I have this in parentheses? Very important because this doesn't subtract from this, right? These multiply together and that negative is going to come out in front. Now there's subtraction. Partial z with respect to v. Zero. Finally something nice. Zero times, who cares, right? This is zero? Okay, this one though, let's just do it. Partial y with respect to w would be? U sine v cosine w. All right, we are one third of the way there. 
All right, minus, minus partial x with respect to v. Negative u sine v cosine w. We all in agreement on that? No. No? no? OK. Sine oh, sine w. Sine w. Sine w. OK, that's this. Parenthesis, right? Whatever this is, distributes through here. Partial y with respect to u. Sine v, sine w? Yeah. Sine v, sine w? Got this. Times. Negative u, sine w? Do you all see what I'm saying? What a mess this is. OK. All right, we're still here. So that's that. And then we have minus. Is everyone cool with this one? Yeah. yeah. OK. Partial z with respect to u. Cosine w. Cosine w. Times partial y with respect to w. U sine, u sine v. What? Cosine w? Yeah. Yes, yeah. cosine w. Close parenthesis. All right. Okay, plus, plus, partial x with respect to w. Why are we doing this? I mean, we know the answer is going to be rho squared sine phi. Because I want you to see, I mean, this is something that you, with this idea of this formula, you can do this. It's just, it's going to be ugly, but you can do it, right? Partial x with respect to w, u cosine, u cosine v, cosine w, u cosine v, cosine w, okay, then parentheses, so I've got that one now. Hey, what do you say, what do you say we turn this off? I don't think we need it anymore. This is going to take me till the end, if I even finish it. Okay, so that's that. Okay, this parenthesis, partial y with respect to u. Sine v, sine w. Sine v, sine w. Okay, that's this one. Times partial z with respect to v. Yes! I'm a little too excited for that. It's only one piece that goes away, right? Partial z with respect to u. Cosine w, and finally, partial y with respect to v. U cosine v sine w, right? Close the parentheses. There it is. Somehow this becomes rho squared sine phi. So let's just get rid of uh, things that we know we can get rid of. The zero parts. Right? I'm going to try because of time. I only have eight minutes. I'm going to try to go. I don't want to skip too many steps because then I'm afraid something's going to go wrong. All right, so erasing this. I mean, we're committed now. Right? We're committed at this point. All right. Are all the lights on? It seems. Okay, so cosine, cosine v sine w. All right, when I put all these together, right, I'm, I'm not distributing yet. Oh, wait, hold on. That's gone, right? So I can put those together now, can't I? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's see about putting those together. How many u's do I have? One. That one, that one, and a negative, right? Yeah. So negative u squared. Okay, and then let's start with uh, v's. Do I have any sine v's? So I've got the u. Cosine v? Cosine v? Cosine squared? V. Got that? Got that. Okay. Sine w cubed, right? Sine cubed w. All right, got that part taken care of. 
Okay, over here, this middle one's gonna suck. Um, let's do this, minus minus, right? So I'm gonna put plus these two, um, can't do anything there, u sine v sine w, parenthesis. Okay, I'm gonna put those together and those together. So here, minus u, sine v, sine squared w, good. That's what that is. Okay, I've got that taken care of, that taken care of. Now I have minus still, minus? I have a u, I'll bring my u first, and then I'm gonna go, in, I'm gonna go vw all the time. Okay. okay, so v, sine v, cosine squared w, close it. Done that, right? Over here, over here, right, this is multiplying through to this, right? So I've got u here, I've got a u here, don't I? Yeah. And then a minus. So a minus u squared. Yeah. Um, let's do our v's first. Cosine v, cosine, cosine squared v? Yeah. Cosine squared v, that takes care of that. And that, and then cosine w, cosine w, sine w. It doesn't matter how, what order you put those in. Do you care? No. Okay, cosine squared w, sine w. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. Equals negative u squared cosine squared v sine cubed w. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take this and pass it through here and here. All right, u and u again, right? Minus u squared? Okay, minus u squared. Um, sine squared v? Sine cubed w. Sine cubed w. That takes care of the first multiplication. Now second one goes through minus u squared again. And then sine v sine v, sine squared v, sine w. I can't do anything with those, right? So I'll do cosine squared w sine w, kind of to follow the format I had here. OK, hold on. I'm losing track. This was this. This distributed through was this, and then we still have this. Yes. All right. Every single one of these terms has a negative u squared. Negative u squared, negative u squared, negative u squared, negative u squared. So I'm going to factor out a negative u squared just to get, get it out of there, right? Negative u squared. Wasn't it supposed to be rho squared at some point in our, like, remember absolute value? So this is really our rho squared. It just came out. All right. Um, let's do this. I'm going to put a bracket. I don't need a bracket, but I really want to stress that what I have left here. So cosine squared v sine cubed w plus, right, because I pulled the negative out, plus sine squared v sine cubed w plus sine squared v cosine squared w sine w plus cosine squared v cosine squared w sine w. As long as y'all didn't screw up, no. All right, what can we do? Who sees something? Yeah, how though? How do you, I mean, there's a couple places you can start. You get the cosine squared v, and then put the sine cubed w right there, and plus sine squared v. Could you factor out? No, wait, no, you mean just look at these two? Yeah. Yes. Look at just these two. What do they both have in them? Sine cubed. Okay, so we have negative u squared bracket. These both have sine cubed w, and when I pull that out, what am I left with? One. One. Do you all see it? 
that's a one, because it'll be cosine squared v plus sine squared v, one. So that's really, I don't want to go too far. Can I just get rid of the one too? Yeah. Okay, so that's just that. And that takes care of this and this. It's become this. Now, look at those two. You can pull out what? So I'm going to put plus. You can pull out a cosine squared w sine w, right? And when you do that and pull that out of this and pull that out of that, you're left with what? One, one again. Sine squared v plus cosine squared v, which is one. Yeah? So that's all we get. And then from these, you could factor, out a sine factor out a sine w. And you get negative u squared, pull out the sine w. And when you pull out sine w from both of these, what are you left with? Sine squared w plus cosine squared w, which is 1. There it is. And then take the absolute value of that. And remember, what was u for us? U was rho, and what was W it was phi. Super crazy, right? But that's how you can, that's how we can change variables. Now, in most of the things we do, it's only going from Cartesian to cylindrical, or car Cartesian to spherical, and we already know the conversions, we know what to insert. But math in mathematics, generally, you can go from any system to any system you want. You just better be able to compute that determinant. So we have not done 12.8. Um, we haven't done any examples. So when we come back next time, we'll do a couple of examples. And then uh, we'll move into chapter 13. All right? OK, everyone. Oh, turn this off real quick. Excuse me. Oh.